Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, puppies, kitties, tigers, aardvarks, whoever is listening. So who else? Is there somebody else? Hold on. Um, nope, cats out the driveway. They're not listening anymore. All right. Well, welcome or welcome back to JKWD. We hope you are having an awesome day. Um, it is sunny and cold everywhere um, where we are speaking from. Um, colder in some parts than others <laughs> yes uh, it is and we got a we got an interesting one for you today um and uh yeah we'll, we'll get to our guest in a minute kelvin how you doing i'm doing awesome thank you very much i'm here in uh, sunny syracuse you mentioned weather well it was a scant nine degrees when i woke up this morning but you know Thank goodness I was in a heated house. So life is good. Yeah, it's a good thing you got that. Um, it's a good thing you got that furnace fixed earlier this year. Oh man, yes, <laughs> indeed. <clears throat> I am so ever so grateful for having a fixed furnace. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> it was nasty for a while. Yeah, this was a bad, bad time for it. Yeah. How about you? What are you up to? We have had some interesting weather swings here. Um, it was 80 most of the week, but it was, um, you know, we got out for our walk about nine o'clock this morning and it was almost 50. Um, mm. And we're supposed to, I think we're supposed to get one more freeze next week. And maybe I can get some, some seeds in the planters after that. See if oh, we can, hot see diggity. If we, see if we can grow a little something for the spring. Um, Maybe some food would be an interesting, uh, interesting project for the for the kids. Um, but yeah, it's been a it's been a good week here. Um, I think we talked about our water damage issues on the podcast a while a back. Yeah, ago. Um, we finally got the well the um, insurance check came and cleared, and um, we didn't have to fight with them. They they came up with an estimate that was higher enough than the contractor's estimate to just say, um, yeah, that's fine. Um, you know, that'll cover actually the, the work that, um, you know, the, the damage occurred during and the, and the damage and, and buy us dinner for the trouble. Um, and then the contractor came this week and, and took care of the stuff finally. So, um, cool. That chapter is closed. We have a new floor in the laundry room. We have some new paint in the walls and ceiling. We've got some new insulation upstairs. And we we found our general contractor for you know smaller jobs. We're not gonna have one guy who can really. Is that what you have to say? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she must be heard. Uh, yeah. Uh she's being heard. Um so we got that we got that squared away. Um, and, uh, you know, we know we have an idea of what the next smallest project is going to be. We know what the next biggest, what the next two biggest problems or projects are going to be. Um, so yeah, it's nice to have that in the back of our mind. And then, yeah. Uh, you know, 2020 is in swing, I guess. Um, we'll, we'll probably talk about that, you know, by, the middle of February, because I got some energy towards stuff. You got some new energy towards stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, your podcast has been back out and regular, and um, you know, hopefully that's still true in a couple of weeks when this comes up. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I discussed in one of my vitamin K's, it is, you know, goals versus intentions versus goals. It is my intention. Yeah. Uh, and and not only that, it's my intention to keep my intention. So, well, it's double. It's a double loop there. Uh, yeah. Internally, I've always said, or I've been saying, the last year or so since I restarted my pot my podcast at at, at episode zero. Mm -hmm. So, tell them better not let me catch him. And uh, <laughs> I am, <clears throat> I'm up to episode. 52 oh yeah. are you episode 52 i think will have come out by by the time this airs so uh, okay well no 
So no, you, intensity positive is going to stay up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So, so I mean, you're you're about a half year ahead of me. You're 26, 27 episodes ahead, or something like well, that. Well, I'll see if I can, you know, get a little extra distance for the bad days. <laughs> because I'm going to keep I'm going to keep to once a week. So if you want to go ahead and release five or eight some week, go ahead. Um, <laughs> hey, all right. Well, we're checking my audience and see if they actually want to hear from me that often. Well, just you know, just as long as you stay ahead of me, I'll. <laughs> well, I really don't want to give you that much room to grow, you know. So <laughs> I think we'll be we'll be busy here. Okay. okay. We are brought to you by Kettle and Fire, <laughs> Kevin's uh, <laughs> Kevin's miming to remind me to get to the our uh, sponsor <laughs> um <laughs> i was gonna get there eventually but our friends at kettle and fire um recognize that it's winter uh and we've got some they got some delicious bone broths and some delicious soups uh bone broths are all keto friendly soups are all uh some of the soups are keto friendly um they're all healthy and delicious um you can get some miso ginger you can get some um, you know, I really like the Chipotle beef bone broth. Um, they get a lot of good stuff. You go to kettleandfire.com. It's K-E-T-T-L-E-A-N-D-F-I-R-E.com. When you check out, use code BETTERHUMANHOOD. They'll give you 10% off your order. And Marlena says, time to roll the music. And when you come back, we're going to... You're going to hear our conversation with Dylan Barr, author of The Happiness Gap. And uh, I hope you get a, as much out of it as, as we do. And we'll see you in about 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. How's it going, guys? Good. Good. How are you? It, I am well. Are you up in what, New York? Well, one of half of us is. Ke- I'm Ke- up in I'm up in Syracuse. And I'm and, in, uh, uh, Josh. Oh. Josh is in sunny Savannah. <laughs> oh, Savannah, Savannah, Georgia. I'm right south of you. So I grew up in Michigan. Okay. I live in Denver, but right now I'm in Siesta Key. Okay. For a wedding. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. Are you yeah, the one getting married? Or? Retreat. Oh no, not yet. No, but I am getting married uh, this September, September eighteenth, twenty twenty, in Colorado. Awesome! Congratulations! Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's been eight years in the making. Oh, no need to rush yeah. in that stuff. Take That's it from a guy who's not. been married three times. Like you just take your time. Exactly. Okay. Get it right. I, I like that. I like get that. It, get it, it right. Better. You know, stress test it. All that stuff. We, um, so we lived, we didn't grow up together. Uh, we met during an internship in college. And then from there, we both moved, uh, we lived in Africa for three years. So we oh, lived wow. in, in Kenya and it was Kenya for about two and a half years. And then the last six months was in a hotel room in the middle of Gaeta, Tanzania, um, where we were the only Americans in like a three hour radius. So we figured if we can do this together, we can be in this small, uh, hotel room together. We we can pretty much make it. Oh wow! So what what brought you to to Kenya and Tanzania for three years? Uh, we worked with a company right outside. So when I was in college, uh, I did an internship where I sold books door to door. So if you guys have ever had someone knock on your door with a green backpack trying to sell you educational kit stuff for your kids, that was me. Um, and then that led into a consulting gig with a, with a sales consulting company called Witten and Roy Partnership. So they work mm-hmm. with uh, socially minded businesses. So uh, like solar companies, small scale solar companies, agriculture companies, uh, sanitation companies. They do it in third world countries though, or developing countries. Um, so that's what took us to Kenya. And then I was in Indonesia for a bit, Southeast Asia, most of Africa. 
Wow. He'd been yeah. more places than me, and I was in the military for 20 years. So. Get out. Thank you very much for your service. Oh, you're welcome. You, you might have done better work place. than I did. I was kind of lazy. No, I, did, I didn't say Hey, that. come on. Give yourself some credit. I can't put that on, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was a fun time. So awesome. Oh, welcome to our show. Thank you. I'm very excited. I've been bragging about you guys for a bit now. It's all oh. my friends. Great. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm um, just glad you guys found me. I thought that was a shock. For me, <laughs> Josh, like, I don't know well, these people. I have a, Josh um, has a keen a keen eye for talent. So wow. there, there's a there's a um there's a service called Any New Books that they they scrape from Amazon's new releases, um, and you can get on their list by category. So yeah, I, I saw the title of your book, The Happiness Gap pop up and i said oh that sounds a lot like um you know something that that we try to talk about um oh, over here and you know, getting people happier and you know maybe shifting expectations as needed so so we thought that you know you might want to come on and talk a little bit about you know where where the happiness gap came from for you and and um what you can teach our audience I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see. I mean, it, a lot of it comes from what I just talked about, right? Living overseas for a bit, but uh, no, I'm, I'm excited to talk about it today. Yeah. So, Go ahead, Kevin. So was that uh, like a Peace Corps kind of thing or, or uh, no missionary uh, thing or <laughs> what? I always tell people it's like, it's like the exact opposite in a way because we were sales consultants that worked with local businesses and taught them how to sell. Um, so these companies would start like a, like a small scale solar company. One of the companies we worked for was, uh, called M Copa and it did instead of big solar units you see on houses here, it was a solar unit that was, you know, one foot by two foot, just getting that in rural villages, um, in Kenya. And then we were also in at the time, Tanzania and I think Uganda, uh, but getting into the rural villages to get people to stop using candles. Uh, because it was bad for their health. It was poor for the kids eyesight. So it was kind of revamping that and they only paid um, Something like 10 to 50 cents a day uh, For it. So it made sense uh, mm -hmm. It was it was also a viable yeah. company. They just didn't know how to get it across So they brought our company in to kind of I would I would follow them in the field watch their presentations in a completely different language and <laughs> um, and just advise accordingly Wow. Cause you hear a sales conversation enough, you know what they're saying and what they're not saying, you know, where they're feeling uncomfortable or they're not feeling uncomfortable. And, um, our company always talks about, it's like sales has this dark art around it. Everyone thinks it's like, Oh yeah, in sales, you probably twist people's arms. And that's just not the case. You know? So we were teaching people. It's like, how do you actually keep your mind, your heart focused on you want to solve a challenge and understanding people's challenges. And if your product solves that challenge, helping them out. Because if not, you're doing a disservice to them. So that's a long way to answer your question that I was not doing a Peace Corps and I was not doing... Uh, yeah, that, was, that sounded work. perfect to me. Sound perfect to you? All right, Rob. Check. <laughs> there you go. So, I mean, I guess talk to us about um, you know, the concept of the happiness gap and, and if you can kind of weave in kind of what, what your mission currently is in terms of marketing sales and life that that kind of yeah um i'm gonna take those in reverse order if yeah. that's okay i'm gonna go my mission first so i yeah. i have a deep desire um on this concept that i call boundlessness uh, so i was okay. reading this book by sad guru um when i was overseas it's called a yogi's guide to joy and he was talking of this concept and then when he was meditating um boundlessness was the word that came to mind with the experience that he had where mm -hmm. he had a point where he's like, I don't know where I stop and where somebody else begins is he's that big of a Yogi, right? He's like, I don't know where I stop and this rock begins and vice versa kind of felt one with everything. Um, I don't know if I'll ever touch that, <laughs> but I, I get the same belief when it comes to like ideas, emotions, concepts, um, our soul of, being able for me to pass an idea to somebody, let's say I pass an idea to you guys and you're like, Oh, I really like that concept. And then you take it into your day to day life and you pass that on with your own twist. That's part of me. That's with you. 
right? And vice versa, I'm going to learn something from you guys and I'm going to take that to my day to day. Um, so I think that interconnection just, that gets me going. That, that's my deep desire. Um, what I think my mission is in that is I, I just like to help people look at things a bit differently. I think I was kind of put here to, to shake people up at times, tell them things that they don't want to hear, which is why I'm, I'm a, a sales coach. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'm also the kind of the, 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 the friend in my friend group that everyone comes when they need kind of like blunt advice. Um, so I like shaking people up, having people look at things differently. And I think that leads, that's my mission. That leads to the book. Um, it's the concept of the book. I want people that's the first chapter is looking at things differently. I think we have got to a point when we look at success, the way we are looking at success is so warped, right? It's, it's in the subtitle. It's how much money can I get? It's, um, how many Instagram likes can I, how many double taps can I get? Uh, how many followers can I get? Uh, it's all outside of ourselves. So it's all external. And what we, we don't realize is once you achieve whatever you're saying you want to achieve, there's just going to be something bigger for somebody with more. Um, and I didn't see that as much when I was living overseas uh, in the bush, they would say in Africa, mm -hmm. people knew what their desire was. Of course, they wanted to make money, but that wasn't the driver of their success. That led to what they really want. Um, so that's the concept of the book. It's like stop focusing outside yourself. Um, start focusing inside yourself. What are the values that you've gained from the people in your life? And uh, how do you actually want to act on those daily? That will get you closer to money, fame, success, you know, world domination. Um, but it's, I don't think that those are mile markers. That's not like what I say. It's not the gas that's in the car. So how did you come to that for yourself? I mean, it sounds like you, um, yeah, if I'm kind of guessing on your timeline, it sounds like you, um, were in Africa not, not terribly long after college. Um, mm -hmm. so, so you managed to, to come up with this fairly young, um, like how did you how did you understand to recognize that and how can you point out those um how, how can you how did how can you instruct others to to recognize that those gap points um oh, that's a good question. in their in their lives yeah so first one how did i recognize it myself and then how do i think others can yeah. um i yeah so i'm 28 yeah i'm pretty young i was just on i was on another podcast and they were asking like how old are you um 28. And I think the way that it came about, I saw it is, I write about this in the book. I, I, I'm not writing this book to you. I'm writing the book with you mm -hmm. because I struggle with this um, regularly. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be uh, introduced into the world of sales pretty young. So I started selling when I was 15, 16 to start paying my way for college. And then I sold books door to door for five years to pay my way through college. I was the person that I'm writing to. And I see so much in young culture. Um, you know, I would finish a summer and I made $38,000, let's say. And I'm like, wow, this is great, but it's not good enough. I need to make 20. And then the second summer I went out and I make $30,000 and I'm like, wow, this is awesome. But it's not David, you know, or it's not, uh, I think her name was Trinity at the time. It's like, I want to be like her. Um, but I started seeing that. So I was lucky enough that when I went to Africa, it just shook me up. I'm like, wow, not all these people are, are successful at what they do when they learn our practices. And, but they're not competing of who's the best. They all just feel very content with what they're doing and they're connected to something deeper. Um, so that I, I had a slap in the face when it came to it. Like life just, you know, backhanded me. Um, I think for others, it sucks because I think a lot of people get to the point where it's, they almost feel it and it's too late. Like they're already burnt out and they're like, I got to, Oh my gosh, I'm drained. I can't do this. Um, but one of the concepts we used to teach when I was a consultant is, is starting to understand your ticks. So like when you're frustrated, right? I'm sure you guys can remember the last time you were frustrated. It's like, what are the things that your body does? <laughs> what time is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> when did I have my yeah, yeah, I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's my alarm clock this morning. I can tell you last time I was upset. But with that, let's even say that. There are people, it's like as soon as the alarm clock, like, come on. Uh, um, what, what are the physical ticks that you have? Right? So what are the things that you do? Um, I think awareness is huge. Oh, you know, it, it, I think it's the one of the first things we need 
to recognize we need to change. So if you have awareness of, oh, what am I doing with my body when I'm stressed? What am I, what am I doing with my mind? What am I saying um, when I'm upset? Then you can start kind of tracking your ticks. I have my sales team actually, they have a journal and they'll write down. It's like, oh, I tense my legs. Okay, good. So, mm. so now, now you know that tick. Remind yourself, take a deep breath or at least focus on your breath. Don't even take a deep one. Just realize it's there. Ask yourself what you, what you really want and, and move forward. I think that, that's how people can slowly start to, to right the ship. So how did you... Uh... How did you become aware? I mean, as far as the you know the the physical body things, you know, when you got stressed and stuff like that. How did you become aware of those to even start to focus on? Um, these are good ones. I practiced meditation at a at a pretty young age. So as soon as I went to college, I started practicing meditation. And I think that just brings awareness in itself. I was I was talking with somebody yesterday, and they're like, I can't meditate. I'm just I'm just nonstop thinking, and I'll get good at it. I'm like. No, you are meditating. (laughs) The whole concept of meditating is to get lost in thought and then to realize, oh, I'm lost in thought. And then you're separating yourself. You're creating an observer out of all of it. I'm not my thoughts. I'm this. So I think breath work has been a huge help. Um, And then a big thing that I do now is a concept called divided attention. So this is started by uh, Gurdjieff is his name. He's a Sufi mystic. And... um, it's, it's, it's this concept of putting not 100% of your attention in the moment. I think everyone wants to be like, oh, give me 100% of your attention. Well, that's bullshit because that's going to last for five to 10 seconds. And then someone's going to think, well, what did I have for breakfast? What am I doing later today? Mm-hmm. So I always say, well, just give me 80% of your attention, right? And we can do it. We can practice it while we're doing this. But give me 80% of your attention and just put 20% on your breath. You know, I think when we start to do that and you're, you're – you're, you're just being aware of your stomach expanding, your stomach contracting. We actually have less thoughts the more we do it. We're more calm. Um, so when things come in, like you're saying, Calvin, it's, it's easy to pick up on that. I'm like, oh, this isn't normal. I don't normally tense my legs this much, or I'm not normally like tapping my foot. Mm-hmm. Let me look into it. That's nice. I... Um... <laughs> No, I'm just going to leave it right there. That's nice. I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you alluded to it a little earlier. And one of the things that, um, you know, and, and you kind of, you came of age you know, already in a social, in a social media world. Um, yes. So, you know, we didn't, you know, Kelvin and I, and we're, we're still, you know, we get a wide age gap, but, um, but you know, we both we both grew up in the dark ages where um you know in order to in order for like real comparison, like we had to see somebody on TV um mm-hmm. almost. Um mm-hmm. you know, maybe it was somebody on the sales team, but you know, we we weren't bombarded with it on, on Instagram and Facebook and wow, that person's living a much better life than me, even though you know that it's not real. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, how did you, I mean, you said it was a, a bit of a slap in the face, but how did you recognize um, that what you were seeing, uh, you know, in, in real life in, in those developing countries, that that, that, that was actual happiness uh, versus what you were used to comparing yourself to with the, um, you know, with people who are making more money and maybe people who were taking flashier photos and, um, yeah. Yeah. I, um, also being down here at Siesta Key, I'm uh, seeing my friends from high school. It's like our whole high school gangs back oh, together wow. for this yeah. wedding, which is awesome. And we were talking, I honestly think we were right at the cusp of when social media was really starting to take off because we were, we were joking about when we were in middle school, like the game would be to go to each other's houses and um, play like blackjack because we learned that from yeah. our dads. But if you lost, you would drink this concoction of hot sauce and uh, pickle juice and mustard. You'd have to drink it and then try not to throw up. That was <laughs> our entertainment. That was what oh. we did for fun, um, <laughs> which was not social media, believe it or not. There was another one we went in this Right, we this yeah. It, was, it really hit while you were in college, right? Because Twitter so, was about yeah, 2008. So, 
part of it is I think I was, you're able to see the transition a bit, but then of course you get lost in, in social media. Right. Um, it's very easy to get lost. But like, well, this is just what I do every day. Right. It's like, as soon as you leave a conversation, it's almost habit. To, and you know, at least in, um, my generation is I leave a conversation, instantly pull out my phone, see if I have any notifications. Or sometimes you're, you're in the damn conversation and you're pulling out your phone and you're not with the person. Um, so I think, again, I, I was very fortunate, which is why I feel, felt like I should write a book, is I was fortunate to go to Africa. And, you know, um, I remember specifically on one sales conversation, I was working with a company that did organic fertilizer mm -hmm. uh, for farmers. Um, to help them increase their yield, but also like reduce all of the damage they're putting into the fertilizers at the time. Um, and the, the sales person was giving the training and then two little kids, obviously who'd never seen what they call us Mzungus, right? That's a, that's a white person. It's actually just a foreigner. Um, and they saw me and they're obviously attracted to me. Like they would all come up and they'd touch me and stuff. And I started playing with them and the joy that they had on their faces. And then I looked at what they're wearing. They got no shoes on. Mm -hmm. I think again, it was just like a, Oh, they're not on their phones. They're just kids being kids thinking it's yeah. fun to touch a white kid and run away. Um, <laughs> it was weird, man. And also being over there, it's, I started to notice how much I went on social media because when I went on social media, everyone here is sleeping because I'm on the other side of the world. So it's like, this is just boring. Holy mm. shit, I do right. this every day. Um, yeah. Well, so you can actually same, be same engaging answer, but... with people one-on-one, -on -one, I mean. <laughs> yeah, just having a conversation. Um, I, I feel like I've had more better conversations with people that I don't even speak their language. Like, them talking to me in Swahili and me kind of speaking a little bit back because I had to learn it when I was there. Oh, mm -hmm. like I had deeper conversations. You look people in the eyes more. Uh, then when you're here, I mean, talk to some people and it's literally the whole time I'm talking to them, they're, I don't know, no one's going to see this, but they're sitting completely not looking at me and having the conversation <laughs> with me. I'm like, geez, look me in the eyes. Right. And, and yeah, I'm over here with the baby and the dog and <laughs> well, I mean, you have a kid and, you, and you can, but you can, but I mean, still it's the same thing, right? Like I'm listening. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I like to think that I'm, I'm catching what you're saying and that I, I'm, you know, responding with intelligent questions that, that aren't, but obviously I've got <laughs> other stuff going on over here. Um, They're very good questions. You know, like better. And yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe better that maybe better that when I'm distracted, I get, a, I'm grabbing a kid's toy away from the dog mm -hmm. then. Um, yeah. Well, you're talking, but I'm, but I'm over here on, uh, you know, just, Check an Instagram for the fifth time in twenty minutes. <laughs> you know, Josh is, but see, he's got a job to do. Jo Josh is 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 pretty good at. I'm the guy who can actually forget what you said while you're saying it. I, that's <laughs> not that I'm distracting at all. You know, <laughs> just off but, stare, staring a little bit to the right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that guy, but. Uh, oh. But you're right. I, I do come from a gen well, I don't know if it was my generation or just me. I like conversations. I like one on one. And I'm I'm one of those people, for instance, when I I mean, I'll invite somebody over and it's just two of us. If you bring three of us, that's a problem because I was counting on this two way conversation and having this stuff. So that communication part is is it is hard programming myself. Um to find <laughs> it's hard to find a good conversation um, these days. Just people who just want to have a conversation and talk and explore thoughts and 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 not fight over political boundaries and crap like that. So um you know finding it is good, but this whole happiness gap I mean it's like this sliver of awareness when you when you uh realize that the happiness is something different than what you've been looking at it so i mean how did yeah. you even come up with that with that concept as far as the happiness gap i so this kind of goes back to boundlessness right take like understanding something conceptually talking to someone else like oh that kind of links up we're kind of similar in thinking here um so i really started meditating a lot in, in college and I got very big into um, this philosopher. I don't know if you're familiar with Alan Watts. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, love him. I probably, I don't want to say I listen to all of his stuff because it's ongoing, but it, it's kind of a morning routine where I'll listen to a little bit of Alan Watts, like a TJOP video, and then I get into my meditation and start my day. Um, he kind of talks about this concept. He's like, you're programmed from a child to, you know, go from kindergarten to first grade. And the reason you do good in kindergarten is so you can get to first grade. And the reason you do good in first grade, I mean, you got a child, they're getting ready to get into it. First grade will take you to second grade and so on and so forth. And it's like, then you do really well in high school to get you to a great college. And then you have to do really good in college. And then you're out into the, the world, he says, with a capital W. And you get your first job, and then it's your next one. And he's like, you're doing all of this in hopes to, you know, he's pretty straight up. He's like, hey, you're doing all this because you want to live this wild life, you know, have a bunch of sex, travel the world. And he's like, by the time that you get to the end and you're vice president of a company because you've, you've lived, you've worked the game, you feel cheated. You, you know, you, you're like, I don't want to travel now. There, I don't want to do all this stuff that I said I was going to do. It sounds like, exhausting. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? I want to go to bed. <laughs> um, so I got that. I got that concept. I was like, wow, that makes, you know, I've always kind of had that in mind. Then, of course, going over to Africa and all that. And when I came back, I was, I was talking to my boss about it because I actually want to, I, I work for a company that helps people self-publish their own books. Um, so that's what drew me to the companies. I've always wanted to write fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to like, create universes before I go to bed in my head just to put myself to sleep. And, um, wow. I was talking to him about, it. he's like, well, why don't you start with a nonfiction first? I was like, okay, let me just think of what I know. And that kind of just came, came to my head of, I wanted just to write about the importance of family values. Cause I come from a, a pretty broken family and I still think I've learned so much from my family. So much. I grew up kind of with my grandparents. Um, mom and dad never married. But I've learned so much from my mom. I've learned so much from my dad. Uh, Mm -hmm. I learned so much from my grandparents. And I wanted to get this concept of like the family crest out there. I'm like, wow, this is what family is all about. You should create your own crest now and live into those principles. And then that kind of led to, well, I'm just giving people a solution. And what if they don't fucking like that? So then that led to like, well, the reason I would do that is because I want to avoid the problem of constantly looking outside myself. So I'm like, okay, well, I want to tell people what it's like then this ongoing challenge of external thinking, of external rewards. And then my boss was just toying ideas. He's like, what about the happiness gap? So I thought it was, so actually the happiness gap isn't even from me. Chandler Bolt gets all this credit. Um, So he kind of had the concept. So I think it's a bit of what Alan Watts talks about is you're constantly chasing something you're not going to get. And then me really being in, in touch with internal values and then wanting to show that challenge, which is external thinking is just constantly going to lead to this gap between yourself and happiness, thus the happiness gap. Wow. Yeah. What is your, um, what is your meditation practice look like these days? Oh, um, this morning was actually, so my fiance and I woke up here and made, I made some tea. I try my best not to do coffee. Um, she made herself some coffee and we went out to the beach. We we're lucky enough to be right on the beach. And, and she just kind of sat cross-legged and did some breath work while I did, um, you familiar with Qigong at all. You know, have you ever yes. seen those like videos of old Chinese women just like moving with this, the wind? I do that. Um, I look a lot different than an old Chinese person. I'm <laughs> six foot she six, <laughs> six foot six. Oh. I believe it or not. Kind of tall for a guy who's sitting down. (laughs) (laughs) Do not play basketball to answer that question. (laughs) Um, No, so I did, I did Qigong this morning. um, And uh, my fiance, Morgan, she, uh, she just kind of sat next to me, but um, I go through chakra work um, when I first started, right? Energy throughout. Um, I was lucky enough to have a really good uh, meditation teacher when I was in college. I took two slack off classes. I took more than that, but two slack off classes that were solely to meditation. Mm-hmm. So he taught me some work of, of just how to move energy in my body. Um, honestly, now it's just getting in touch with the breath. And then when I wander off, just catching myself. I like to listen to some music, like some no vocals, but like some uh, Chinese music go through it or a mm-hmm. Hindu mantra. I'll, I'll recite some mantras, but everyone's different. Because I think if you're doing it the same every time, it, it turns into an obligation. And if you ever take something so spiritually uh, good for you, 
and it's an obligation, you're going to stop doing it and you're not going to want to go back. Right. So prayer should never feel like an obligation. Meditation should never feel like an obligation. Tai Chi yoga should never feel like an obligation. Um, if it does, I always tell people, take a break, sleep in if you yeah. need to. Cause when you come back, you want to be fresh. I've just recently been doing or studying about doing some chakra work. <clears throat> I'm, I'm kind of like really heavily in the fringes, <laughs> you know, of, of, I might, I might, I might. yeah, you know, um, uh, I got, I've done a lot of guided meditations. Um, what's her name? Um, can't think of her name right now. But anyway, uh, guided meditations. I've learned, I did some stuff with Mind Valley, which may be more commercial than that. But I read The Power of Now. Took the words out of my mouth. <clears throat> I read The Power of Now. And it was a very enlightening book. Um, I didn't finish it for some strange reason. But it, it was when I was reading that book that I actually really got effective in the meditation. I'm really not sure how it happened because I've read that part again and I'm like, well, how did I get to where I was from here and how can I get back? But I remember him saying that when you could get to the point where you observed, <clears throat> excuse me, the, like the conversations, the shenanigans of your mind as if it were the antics of a small child and you knew you were on the right path of just observing what your mind is doing and stuff like that. And that was such a, a, a break for me. That was like really, really cool. So then I just started watching to see what my mind was doing. And I don't know if I got to happy from that, but I got to aware from that. So I'm generally a pretty happy person. And, and when I'm not, then I got to backtrack, say, I don't know, a couple of weeks and found out where it went <laughs> and come back up to it. But <clears throat> you seem you're, you're aware, so you're constantly in touch with your your body to to help let you know what your mind is doing. Because I mean, you you track tension and and stuff. I've had mm -hmm. a couple of months ago, I ended up with some anxiety, which was really really wild because I'd never had anxiety before. I I'm sure that when it hits, you're like, whoa. Yeah. I mean, I had talked to people who had had it and, and, and I kind of understood it conceptually, but not from a really, I've got it position. And I got to tell you, it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I did what I needed to do to mostly get rid of that. And, you know, sometimes the decisions we make cause us issues, but um, the meditation with that, I mean, a, a lot of people, don't really know how to meditate, how to find that, that happiness. Um, well, it's funny when you say Eckhart Tolle, it's hard for, for interjecting there, but uh, he talks about like the veil of thoughts, right? Uh -huh. It's like you're, you're out, you're on the other side of this veil, you oversee it, you can see all these thoughts. Right. Um, and really just being in touch with the breath. I think if you just dead, I think the real challenge is people don't want to dedicate X amount of time to just do nothing mm -hmm. and, and focus on their breath. Cause when you do that and you're just focusing on your breath, you're going to start to be more in tune with other thoughts. Or if you sit down the first time and you're like, you, you get out of it and people say, how was it? And you're like, well, the whole time I thought I'm like, cool, you're right. You're on the right path. At least you knew that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> next time you'll do the same thing. And then sooner or later you'll be able to catch yourself. Oh, and I'm then it's, it's all, it's, it's, it's your, um, it's like you're flexing that muscle mm -hmm. and it's like, Oh, I'm, I'm off on thoughts. So I think awareness, Calvin, you're spot on. Like that is, has to be the first step. Um, I was having a conversation with, with, uh, my boss and he was saying, Hey, what do you think is the one thing if people had, they would, it would determine their success. And, and for me, when I think of success, I just think of growth, right? It doesn't have to be money. Um, and I say that he thinks that it's, it's like some type of resiliency from like a big, uh, hard moment that they fought in their life or a hard time. It's like, Hey, they, they pick themselves back up in which I, I agree to a point. I just think if you don't have awareness, it's, it's very difficult to get through any situation. Cause you, it's like, you could have a tool belt of skills and values that can solve challenges. But if you don't know that you're looking at a nail over a screw, 
then you're not going to know which, which tool to use. So I think you're spot on. Like the first thing you need to have is, is some awareness. Then I think you need to be willing to be vulnerable with yourself. At least what I talk about in my book, it's like you need to have awareness that there's a challenge. You need to have awareness of how you're looking at things. You need to dis- make a, ch- a decision that, hey, I don't want to keep doing this. Um, and then you have to have some vulnerability to be like, well, what is it that I want? And, and you can't be afraid to be like, well, this is what's true to me. Um, it might not be the same. you know. So what I talk about in, in, in the book is, that's the all external is how I start the, the book. It's like, hey, if you're focusing external is what it's going to lead to you. The internal shift is then saying, okay, well, what are the values that I've gained from people in my life? Like I was telling you, what's the value I gained from my mom? What's the value I gained from my dad, my grandparents? Um, whether they're here or not, right? So most of my grandparents are dead. That doesn't mean I can't learn from them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so taking some time and awareness to reflect and be like, hey, what have I flipping learned from the people that have put me here, that have mm-hmm. shaped the reality? that I, I grew up into. So like my grandparents, like their values and their way of looking at life shaped the way that I look at my life. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's just how it is, right? You're doing it right now, Josh, with your daughter. I think yeah. I was listening to another podcast. Yep. You're um, shaping the way she looks at life. Yeah. Well, and you, you talk about learning from your grandparents uh, directly across from my desk is a, is a photo of my grandfather. Um, from when he was three uh, and having his ritual haircut. And it's actually um, got the hair that was sheared in the frame. Uh, And I don't, I mean, I have some, you know, I have happy memories of my grandfather, um, but I don't remember a lot of like deep conversations. It was always just spending time, but I remember stories and, um, when my grandmother died, she predeceased him by 13 months. Um, the rabbi came over to, you know, to, you know, to write something about her and said, you know, how, you know, how long was the courtship? And without missing a beat, my grandfather said 61 years. Um, and <laughs> that's awesome. Um, that's awesome. You know, when, when it was his turn, you know, 13 months later, he was, he was in the hospital. We knew that it was going to be his last few weeks. Um, he wouldn't let any of the kids come see him. Um, I was, was probably in my mid twenties, early twenties, mid twenty. I, you know, I definitely could have, you know, handled it, but, but that's a point of pride for him. Um, you know, mm-hmm. that, you know, he would answer the phone and he'd talk, but he wouldn't, uh, uh, but he wouldn't let us come see him. Um, but yeah, you know, he waited until his three kids were in the room, and uh, you know his his parting wisdom to them was uh, to keep the family together. Uh, and you know now that we're we've moved from Massachusetts to um, Savannah, you know my house has become the gathering house. Um, my sister has moved her family about five minutes away. My parents are two hours away. My brother's four hours away. And this is where people meet. You know, everybody gets up to my parents occasionally, but because my brother's South and my parents are North, um, we all meet here. <laughs> um, and so, and that's, yeah, that's a lesson I took. Um, what are yeah. some of the, what do you what think you get out of it? Um, and then I'll, then I'll answer. Yeah. You, I promise. Um, yeah. I get a sense of, I get a sense of peace. Uh, we had a we had a moment a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, my my daughter's been in some physical therapy. She, her gross motor skills were behind. You know, she wasn't crawling. She wasn't walking. Um, so we brought her to physical therapy. And one of the things they have that she really um, is she she really hated being there. Like it was a new space. It was a new person. They wanted her to do work. Um, one of the things they have is this round swing that she can lay on and you know, can move in any direction. It can spin in circles. And we, um, and it really transitioned her from anger to focus. Like she calmed right down when she got on that thing and started moving, we could take her off and she'd do some work. And when she got upset, we could put her back on the swing. Um, so we got one of that, one of those swings um, for the yard. And it took us a while to, you know, like 
it showed up and then it rained for like four days. So we couldn't set a swing set up outside because it wouldn't stick in the ground. And finally, about two weeks ago, as we're talking, you know, it'll be another week or so before the podcast comes out. But um, I called, I called my brother-in-law and said, Hey, I'm going to light the grill. Come on over. Let's get this thing set up. And you know, we got the thing set up and um, my sister and her daughter who's four and um, my daughter were playing on the swing set and my brother-in-law was chasing the dog around the yard and um, I was standing at the grill. My wife came over. I'm like, this, this is it. You know, the, you know, just all of us standing in the, in the backyard. That's, you know, that's the sense of peace and that's the family and that's the village. You know, when, when people say it takes a village to, to raise a child, we all live in these boxes and, you know, we know our neighbors and we've been here a year and a half and we know, you know, these, you know, 10 houses over here and five of them across the street and um, a few of them up on the cul-de-sac and we counted 31 houses. We probably know 17 or 18 of them. Um, which I think is very unusual. A lot of people don't know their neighbors at all. Um, but we all yeah. live in these boxes and there's no village. <laughs> um, and so, you know, like just looking out at the backyard and seeing your village and knowing that if I come out front, you know, I've got, you know, you know we're watching out for Miss Carol because her, you know, she's, she's getting older, but, you know, I got Sawa and her two kids, you know, watch out for us. And next door to her, there's another nine year old and, um, you know, he loves the dog and yeah, you know, everybody's, everybody's watching out here. And that's, that's really what, it's really what it feels like. Yeah. You know, I don't need, I don't need to stay shut up in here with the, you know, with the computer open and the phone on. Um, yeah. And it, it's cool that that's what it starts with the family when you say it's a sense of yeah. peace. Right. And it could be something extremely small that gets that going. It's a conversation your grandfather had with your, your family members. Yeah. Um, that small, I don't think it needs to be this life altering thing, right? From that you get to peace. Uh, I was, my dad is actually out here because um, it's, it's, you know, family friends that's getting married. So obviously my dad, part of that, he, he works for the groom's father. So we grew up all throughout childhood together. But so anyway, long, long story short, my dad's here and he's reading the book because I have a section specifically on each person. So before you get into the the actual thick of the book, I go through my lessons, right? I talk about uh, the concept of awareness, like you were talking, we were talking about Kelvin, talk about the concept of balance. Um, you know, bad doesn't always mean bad with a capital B. We think it's this crazy thing. It's sometimes bad things happen so we can learn something from it. Um, talk about this concept of death. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. People die. That That's a thing. Doesn't mean you can't learn from them. Yeah, um, so and then talk about vulnerability. <laughs> there is. There still it hasn't changed yet. Nope, not yet. We haven't found anybody who's lived forever yet. <laughs> not even. Um, <laughs> I'm. 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 I'm work. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> well, I'll stay in touch and ask you questions. You can, you know, journal and everything <laughs> every day. Working on living forever. Uh, but no, we talk about this concept of vulnerability. And then finally, it's this concept called the first follower. I don't know if you guys ever watched that YouTube video. It's just a joke YouTube video, but it's this festival and there's this, this guy, there's one guy dancing in the entire festival and there's this, there's videotaping him and he looks like a weirdo mm -hmm. and no one else is dancing. He's just dancing, having a good time. And out of nowhere, a guy comes up jokingly and like kind of pushes him and he starts dancing with him. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else gets up, starts dancing with that guy. And then before you know it, you have, you know, two to 400 people dancing at this festival. Yeah, I've seen they that. Say, isn't that a good one? Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. They, they say is the concept. It, the weirdo is not the, like the, the difference maker there. He's just being himself. Mm -hmm. The real difference maker is that first follower saying, hey, I'll dance with you. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I say all this is this takes you into the book, which in each section, I... I am the weird dancing guy. I will tell you the lesson I learned from my mom, the lesson I learned from my dad, my, my grandma, my grandpa, both my siblings. And then I turn it over to you as the reader and be like, hey, take a minute. Don't move on. What have you gained from your mom, your dad, your grandparents? So, Josh, you have grandpa check. Um, so my dad's one, he was giving me shit when we were here. And he's like, ants 
are you kidding me, Dylan? Out of all the things I taught you, I was your hockey coach. You, I mean, I, I, I came with you. I, I, you came down to the shop. We worked together, and you have this story about burning ants as the one <laughs> lesson you took from me. So when I was like, <laughs> I had to be seven or eight. My grandpa had like this mag. You guys know those like old magnifying glasses <laughs> that weren't even in the handle. It was just the glass. Oh yeah. And he would go. He would go over baseball cards with them. Well, I quickly realized that I could burn things with them. So I would burn first. I was like burning like grass and then I was burning the wood and ants moved. So I'm like, I'm going to try this. Not even thinking of what I was doing. I'm like, oh, I'm burning them. And he cut me off. He's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. He's like, what, what do you think those ants are? What did they do to you? He's like, what do you think those ants are thinking right now? And for, for me, it's like, that's a very, very small thing. But the light bulb clip goes, oh, I do things that affect other entities on this earth. I do things that affect that. Like what I'm doing now is affecting these ants life or death mortality rate. Um, so learning from my dad, this is a long way to answer your question. You're asking earlier, Josh is I learned this concept of compassion and my dad is not the most compassionate guy. It's not like he's the Dalai Lama over here, but <laughs> through his values, he shaped the way that I look at life growing up. So mm-hmm. gain compassion for my dad. Um, yeah, creativity from my grandma, discipline from my grandfather. And then the last thing that I tried to talk about in the books is then, okay, how do you keep this in your life? How do you remind yourself that discipline is important? How do you remind yourself, Josh, that peace is important? And what you are already doing it, you, you know, you have the family come over and that is a constant reminder. That's happiness. When you say that's peace, that, that's mm-hmm. for me is the gap. Reminding yourself and, and, and staying true to that as much as possible. So when you're going through all those values that you learned, that you learned what you got from whom, <clears throat> did you run across any values that you thought you needed to change? Hmm. No, and this is a good question because I always joke with people and say the book that no one would read is the exact same concept and what is it about your, your family or your parents that you know you inherited that you should not be doing? Mm-hmm. Um, so I would rather just talk about that than turn it into a book because <laughs> no one's going to want to read that from cover to cover. Um, I was very intentional and I want the reader to be very intentional when they go through the book of, you know, what are the things that I really liked, mm-hmm. whether they were a great person or not a good person. And my mom was a very strict parent mm-hmm. um, to the point where it could be scary at times. Like my brother and I were scared to do anything wrong. We never lied to her because of it. So I took enough time through meditation. It's not like I'm just like, oh, snap my fingers. I learned truth from my mom. But it really took some time to go into meditation and be like, hey, what could I glean from that? That's a really good thing. If I really look at it. Well, I never lied to my mom. And I never really lied, period, because I I would always think people knew that I I was lying if I did. So I always try to be true. Um, and with that, it's like, well, then I'm always just going to be myself. I, and I get that compliment all the time of, wow, you're just you. You do not give a shit what anyone thinks. And it's because I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but I also don't think, to kind of answer your question, I don't think parents are perfect. I think there's probably some bad values we've learned. And, and hopefully when people are taking some time, they'll start to realize that. Like, oh, that could be why I act like this. Well, that's not a, that's not a value I want to hold at the forefront. That's just good. It's a little side note. Um, oh, that's back to awareness, hear. right? Is yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, one yeah, of the things we talked about feel the, weird when you're like, uh-huh. and, and I like to talk about it, is we have a lot of values that I mean, well, almost all of our values were just handed down to us. You know, yes. good, bad, and different. They're just handed down to us. We took them because we were there, and they were the parents or the minister or the whatever, and he gave us these values, but we, a lot of us never examine the values we have to find out if they're really values that are, that are serving us. You know, um, I can understand why you didn't put that conversation in your book. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> but it's just one of those, one of those thoughts because people can hold on to things that aren't good for them. And they go, well, that's just the way I am. That's just what I believe. That's just what I, whatever. When, I mean, you're talking awareness, sometimes you, you look at those and go like, is this really true? 
is this mm-hmm. really effective? You know, that kind of thing. So that's why I asked that question. I get this concept of uh, the, I'm, I love history, religion or any sim- symbolism in history, but um, the old family crests used mm-hmm. to signify this. Our family stands for loyalty and we are going to put this on our crest and we are going to ride to battle with this. We will die with this because this is who I am as a bar. That is my last name. Um, I don't think loyalty is in bar, but that was the concept is what is one thing that we hold very dear? Mm-hmm. And there's probably other values that are like, yeah, we, we're not going to put that, we're not going to put that on our damn shield because I don't want this, like making people feel guilty is not a value <laughs> I want on my, on my damn shield. I want loyalty. <laughs> so I think if we, I think if we take a, t- a step back to be like, well, what did I learn? Hopefully those ones that, shouldn't be passed on right because you got to look at this as like at the end it's these are the values that i want to pass on this is dylan Barr, right this is calvin this is josh um this is what i want to pass on you're gonna probably have other things that come in like i don't want to pass that value on that's not what i learned like i have learned it but i i can get rid of that i want to pass this core value on i want my kids to know this value for me not some shitty one (laughs) there you go Oh, I, I would just like to let you know how happy you've made Josh uh, to be because he gets to put an E on the, uh, on the <laughs> podcast today. <laughs> oh, no. I'm so That's sorry. That's two in a row. That's two in a row. <laughs> I oh, no, no. He loves that. Made. He just likes oh, looking okay. at the look on my face going. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one of our. I was going to email things. you guys. And we're going to email back and forth. I'm like, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Okay. <laughs> Him too. I, 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 I don't. I don't. Uh, publicly, generally speaking, right? But it's just like um, that's just that's just me. But uh, I, I just thought you'd, you'd like to know that in the in the <laughs> in the process of being authentic here, you've just made Josh a very very happy man. Uh, this podcast, and so he'll be he'll be looking at me like flashing ease forever, just to just to just like oh, see, so got another one. one. Yeah, yeah. I do you want person. you to know? <laughs> I had awareness on this, Josh, because I know you're with your kid. But I also know you have headphones on right now. Yeah. So I'm like, if I swear the kids, oh, yeah. hear it. But so you know, I, I, I swear in front of the, I swear in front of the kid too, and it's just something I'm gonna have to deal with her teachers. It's all. Jo- exactly. Josh, <laughs> but, you that know, is the value she going. will learn from her father. <laughs> when, swearing. No, <laughs> his only concern like, is that she, <laughs> she, if she uses it correctly, I'm not gonna be too. <laughs> too <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like there, there are some well, things. You, sense? There are some th- some things you do in public, mm-hmm. or that you don't do in public that you do in the privacy of your own home. And similarly, there are some things you say in the privacy of your own home that you don't say in public. And yeah. if she goes into kindergarten and she's calling the kid the, uh, the fucking asshole, like, <laughs> yep. my the you- teacher calls me. Is it, was, was the kid being a fucking asshole? <laughs> 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 Did you yes, use it well, correctly in a sentence? Well, it's like, I mean, like it, that uh, my kid's not the problem there. <laughs> the, <laughs> that's the a fucking asshole. The fucking asshole. That's the problem. Don't, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> uh, uh, hopefully we're not making you feel uncomfortable at all, Kelvin. <laughs> oh no! I didn't know this no, in the I'm, beginning. I'd have been swearing left and I'm right. I'm fine, man. I, I did 20 years in the military, and my son was in the navy, and my other one is. Yeah. Oh no. It's it's not. It's it's just. <laughs> that's just. That's, I'm know, gonna, that's I'm gonna my, put this look, delicately. That's my own standard. I'm right? gonna I'm gonna put this delicately. Kelvin is of a generation where he thinks that, um, it will take the sheen off of him if he swears publicly. But uh, but you get him off, Mike. He's uh, he's fine. Uh, the sheen the sheen was off sheen. as soon as I heard him talking. It's not it's not Afro sheen, is it? It's, it's, no. <laughs> <laughs> I w- can I ask you guys a question? Sure. Yes, sir. Um, I don't know if this is how you're supposed to do this, but screw it. It's Fuck a conversation. It, it's it's we a have, conversation. We we, we don't, yeah. Oh, perfect. What, um, because you talk about having a son that was in the Navy. You obviously have a daughter, which we can hear in the background, Josh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What would be a value that you would want them to take from you? I talk about in my book what, like, as, as me as the observer, everything's subjective. Me as the observer, you know, looking at my dad, I gain compassion. Well, but it I'm might gonna, be different than what he. I'm going to go first because Kelvin's okay. children are grown, so he's got a little more more hindsight on this. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking at Marlena over here, and um, yeah, I, I really want her to. I don't know the. I don't know how to phrase this in the positive yet, but I'll have it by the time. Um, so, um, like I want her not to be a people pleaser. I want her to be her own person and be confident in herself. So I guess confidence mm. is the. Um, yeah. yeah. Like real inner confidence too, of like in yourself. Yeah. Not just yeah. looking so at everything she, I've done, but inner. so that she knows that um, whatever other people think of her doesn't matter. As long as she's happy with who she is, as long as she feels she's living up to her potential, she's the she's the person that she needs to be that she needs to please. Damn, that she should have so the higher standards for herself. That's good that you went first, because now Kelvin's gotta He's got to top that somehow. Well, you know, well, he doesn't. He's got, the, he's got the benefit of hindsight, though. So uh, yeah. you, he'll be able to tell us. But I don't think he actually here. identified it. I know one of the worst whoopings my youngest boy ever got was because he was stealing Christmas bulbs off a guy's tree. Uh, mm-hmm. And there's a whole thing about stealing and dishonesty that bothers me a lot. And uh, now, you know, let the record show, if you ask him when's the last time he got a spanking, he can give you date and time and what direction he was traveling at the time. And that is love. Uh, oh, yeah. Add, add love. And uh, <laughs> it was, it was kind of funny because uh, one of the rules I had when I, was a, when I was a parent was I would actually never hit my child if I was actually angry. Right. Mm-hmm. So. I pretended to be angry and I wore his butt out, but, <laughs> but he can tell you date and time. I pretended so, far to be I know, angry. so far as I know, he hasn't stolen anything else uh, mm-hmm. that I know, but you know, integrity is high up on my list of, of things to, to do, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I, be who you are, be, be a word I like to use is integrous, but it's, it's in the dictionary, but it says it's, it's outdated. So don't use that word anymore. But, um, Honesty and, and integrity, and, and that's sort of kind of in the same, in the same bucket, you know. So it's that, crazy that's you what, say that. To do. That is one of my. That is actually the first core value of my company. Um, it's those two words: honesty and integrity. Always win. Um, that kind of goes back to balance, right? It's like you have you went back of like when's the last time I gave him a whooping, right? But from that is a very good value of what you hold dear. And now I'm sure what your son holds dear. Like, I will always tell you how it is. Um, I think that's beautiful. I, would, I, would, I wish I could have wrote more. In, the reason I asked the question is I wish I could have wrote more in my book from that angle. Right? Because mm-hmm. I, I, I don't have a child yet. Um, just getting married this year. And then child probably three to five year plan maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be very cool to be able to write on, okay, this is what I as a son have gained from everybody in my life, but what do I want to pass on to the kids? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have, I have news for you. Oh, you're, oh, you're 12. God. You can write another book. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely do more books. <laughs> I will definitely do more books and I can speak more. I'll come back and we can talk about my next book or before. Just I'm Absolutely. You know, we take repeats. It's all right. <laughs> oh, no perfect. Problem. Yeah. I know that because I listened to the, the math is a solution. That lady, she was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was her second time on. Yeah. Cool. Oh, so you've been following us for a while. Yeah. 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 I've been listening to a couple. These are fun. These Tell are very fun. I've, my, I was going to say, my followers will definitely know as soon as this comes out. Um, it's a win-win. I get to help you guys out. And people are like, wow, Dylan was on a podcast. I should, I should definitely get his book. Awesome. Yeah. And it looks like a good book. And, and it's a nice, healthy photo on your, on your, uh, on your website there. So. And I like that part about don't forget about your free workbook below. So we might have to work on that some. Usually. Please, please, anyone that gets the book, that is my free giveaway, which we teach with self-publishing schools. Give people something for free. Like, they should feel good reading the book. So as you go through and you're learning, hey, what did I gain from my mother? What did I gain from my father, my grandparents? Um, you can actually take a minute, type it out. Say, hey, what's the value that came to mind? Honesty and integrity, let's say why is that so important to you as a human type that out and how do you actually uh how has it played out in your life and how do you want to keep the ritual going because that's the last part is like 
How do you actually take what you learned, so honesty and integrity, how do you incorporate that into your day-to-day life so you don't forget it, right? Because it is so easy to then get lost in, oh, my phone, oh, my phone, oh, my phone. You're mm-hmm. going to forget that. Truth is an important concept for you. So what can you actually do daily or weekly that remind you of it? So all comes with the uh, internal workbook. Awesome. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to do that. <laughs> please. please. I, I like, this I is, like, this I is, like workbooks. Um, you guys are fun, man. I want I want to come back too. This is, this was a, this is an enjoyable experience. Um, oh, well, thanks. A couple, You're of, a couple oh. of last questions. First, yeah, everybody's favorite. Um, is there anything that you wanted to talk about that we haven't gotten to yet? Um, good question. No, I like you guys do a very good job of asking questions that stem off my very, my first uh, answer of what's my mission to shake people up, to help people look at things differently. And I felt like that if that's my mission, that's what I want to stay true to. Um, so any of your listeners, the only thing that I want to share is I don't care if you get my book or not, but take a weekend to just stop and think, what are the actual, what are the values that I care about in my life and why? I think if they do that, they're going to start, you start making decisions that are correlated with your values rather than decisions that can bring you these external rewards and take you further away from your values. Um, and that is, I think that's tough to do. That'd be the only other thing I'd want to get across other than you have absolutely beautiful daughter, man. This, <laughs> we're seeing it. I know the, the podcast, it won't show our faces, but oh my gosh, she's a cutie. Yeah, her smile is a really disarming thing. I mean, you cannot, you know, she just, it's wonderful. Well, well they melt it that way so that you don't um, throw them out the window when they cry at three o'clock. <laughs> oh, you've got a very good smile. I, I remember that. <laughs> this makes up for the bad times. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where do you hang out online? Where do you want people to connect with you? I probably, I wish I, I did a better job hanging on like LinkedIn or things like that, but I'm a Facebook guy. Um, so just Dylan, D I L L O N bar B A R R on Facebook. Um, Instagram, I'm on Instagram and I'll, I'll give you that just because I think my handle is punny. So my name's Dylan Barr, right? Uh, so my Instagram handle is raising D bar. Nice. Ah, uh, there we go. I was wait. I was waiting for the face. I'm like, it's gonna quit. Like raising the bar, but it's D, and then my last name Bar. Awesome. Oh, those are the places. And then DylanBar.com. We'll tell you more about the book. And okay. me. Yeah, and we'll have all that stuff in the show notes. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. We uh we started a we have a habit. We he and I are on talking, and when the guest comes on, we. St- we just start talking and if it's really mm-hmm. good from the start, we don't cut anything out. Uh, you know, if you, you make a total fool of yourself in the beginning, then we save your, your image, but you did. It's okay. So I don't, I don't think bad. we've got anything to cut out today. Yeah. Wow. That, that's a win for me. Yeah, That also saves us from getting on doing introductions and then saying something brilliant and then having to turn on the recorder and try to recapture it. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh yeah. So if you get that's why we, from the beginning, that's yeah. why, we, that's why we just let it run from the beginning. That way we don't have to try to recreate anything. Um, oh. So did you say anything in the beginning? You didn't want people to hear? <laughs> My name is Dylan. No, I think I got it. Man. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get anything in the beginning. No. Awesome. I, All right. I am truthful with myself. So even if I said something dumb, I want people to know that I'm dumb. Like <laughs> just because I wrote a book, I'm I'm dumb. Please, it's okay. Uh, we're all we're all just trying to trying to learn a little bit. You know, we get we get everything right. You know, why keep going? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, exactly. Talk, you talked early on in our conversation about about growth, um, whatever that looks like, and yeah, I think that's why we're here. Um, you know, doing this podcast is to help ourselves and, and our audience grow. Yeah. I appreciate, I think what you guys are doing is so cool. Um, especially with, with like you're saying, being on lists where you're hearing or getting notified of new books coming out. 
and brand new authors. It's like, these are the people that are, are really working on it now. It's one of the reasons I want to write. It's like, I, I know I'm not a Stephen King or a Eckhart Tolle or an Alan Watts or anything, but everyone starts someplace. Right. I think it's awesome that you give I mean, those people Stephen a spotlight. King wasn't Stephen King when Stephen King started. You know, Eckhart Tolle was Eckhart Tolle when Eckhart Tolle started because that's what the, that's what the book is. Um, <laughs> but he was also a homeless man for a little bit, apparently. He talks about it in his book. He just right. he was homeless. Right. Um, and then, you know, but, you know, he wasn't then who he is now. And, uh, yeah, that's, you know, the old saying, you can't, yeah, you know, man, man can never stand in the same river twice. It's never the same river. It's never the same man. Yep. Um, oh, I dig it. So we'll um, we'll give you a shout when this is up. Um, I expect probably the twenty seventh if I'm doing calendar math correctly. Um, and uh, that's a Monday. Yeah, yeah, we come out on Mondays. Um, and uh, we're actually hoping to be out in Denver in August. So so. We'll look you up, and if you're not too uh, too deep in um, in uh, into wedding planning, we'll uh, try to hook up for for some tea. That'd be, yeah, that would be awesome. Coffee and coffee and concepts. I mean, I'll drink tea, but that's that's what I like. Is let's <laughs> let's have some coffee and just talk about ideas. Cool. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on, you guys. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, you have and, a great- uh, yeah, good. I will, and hopefully, you guys find me on Facebook. I'd love to connect to you somehow, or. I share yeah. my number, so I'm just just to just to stay in touch. I'll be listening to the podcast. Great, alrighty. You have a awesome. great day. Take care, guys. Bye. Yeah. Hey, thanks for listening. Show notes and more at jkwdpodcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, and share with your friends. And we will see you next week. A Better Humanhood Production.